that my family never had was homeless days. We never really had hard times like y'all probably have. So one of the things I try to let my family understand that everything I do, my life is past tense, is for you guys. And that's something that I have to live for every day. When I first started housing homeless people in 2013, I seen something that I don't know if everybody had ever seen before. And that was people sleeping in a tent, people having no hope. And I made a vow to God that day that I would never be quiet, never not say nothing when I see a homeless person. And this is something that it's not time for us to celebrate because there's so many more out there. And one of the things that I tell you guys that's standing up, what I give to y'all is to give back to somebody else. You know, seven youth, this table, these four is full of seven youth. Last Sunday when I left church, somebody said, Miss Flowers, I want you to come and see these children. Children sleeping behind a building. Every adult in this room should look at them children because they are somebody children that we disappointed somewhere. And I say that because when I seen them, I didn't have a clue. I said, darn, I'm dealing with the older people. What am I gonna do with children? You know, I can't even get along with my own children half the time. <laughs> they looking they look, they look crazy, but these are somebody children that when I got them that Sunday, and, and I tell people all the time that we gotta put the truth out there because I probably called everywhere in Baltimore City that I could think of that somebody was telling me they deal with youth. I hear people every day talking about a mentor to youth. I hear people every day saying they wanna work with youth, they do stuff with youth. Well, I hope before some of these adults leave out here today, y'all can make sure these youth right here can connect with y'all because I only did part one. They have so much more needs that's greater than I can do. And it ain't nothing in Baltimore City in this past, what, eight, nine days, was able to come and say, Miss Flowers, we want to help you with these youth. But when I seen them sleeping outside behind that building, I know I couldn't leave them back there. So we got to get personal, Baltimore City. I know it's a lot going on. I know everybody got different passions. But when you start talking about children, you think about children, just like I want to tell my family. Think about children who will have half the things that we have. My family, please stand up. My nieces, my nephews from the little ones, stand up. And I ask them to stand up because they need to see people who haven't had half the chance that we had with stuff. So I, I'm not going to spend this evening, you know, on my soapbox with this because I do have a radio station. <laughs> but at the same time, I want to tell you guys that I love y'all. I know we can fuss, we can, we can go off at times with each other. Y'all probably ain't been around me that long to see that, but the and them probably have. But um, the biggest point of them is I love y'all. And I will, I will die for y'all. And that's how I feel. Because it should have never happened to y'all life. So. I really want y'all to realize what it's like to deal with the homeless people because it's unacceptable in this city. And I'm grateful for our council people. I don't know if they're still in here. I'm grateful for the mayor, for the potential mayor. I'm grateful that they come, but I want them to understand that they gotta do something more for Christina Flowers than show up to a party. They gonna have to do a whole lot more because this is just, I'm just here. I'm just a vessel that God is using. What are they going to do for these children? What are they going to do for these homeless individuals that I can't fulfill the whole process? So I want you guys to know that. Like, my empowerment to you guys is to give back to other people, to be a voice, to, to know that now that you have a roof over your head, whether it's temporarily, whatever it is, I'm going to work until it's permanent, until it's to be known that you guys do not never have to be homeless again when it comes to me.
Okay, so I want y'all to remember that. I want to allow, I want to take my time and allow, hey Mike, <laughs> I see my friend Michael. I want to take my time and allow Archie to come and speak. And the reason why I picked Archie to come and speak, because Archie was kind of stubborn with me at first when I met him. But it wasn't that he was stubborn, he was guarded because they'd been so hurt. They've been so disappointed and let down all the time. Like, who is you, lady, coming that's going to do something different? I ain't have all the answers for him then, and I think I probably have proved to him that I'm here for the long haul. But now Archie has become more aware how to speak for himself. But when I want to share the story about the biggest thing it is, Baltimore City put them in a hotel for the past four months. Yep. Probably almost $5,000 they done spent on this young man. But then he got a note the other day, the October the 1st, to say they got to go. $5,000 we can invest in him to stay in a hotel with no permanent housing, no plan. You know, that's a lot of money to invest in one person. That could have been his security deposit. That could have been his rent. That could have been something to help him get on his feet. So we got to realize that, you know, yes, we got issues in our city, but the things that they are investing in is our people. They invest in them for a short time period. What about the long-term plan? Like, I need people to be a long-term plan for these individuals, so that's real important. So I'm going to allow Archie to speak and be able to close out just again so we can be more aware. And this month is about awareness. It's about consciousness. When y'all see homeless people, let's try to be more conscious. And, and you know, the Pope came to the city and all he was talking about was underserved and homeless people. You know, he really did a big thing for me yesterday, but we need to bring the Pope and the Baltimore in our own hearts because it's like a what would Jesus do type situation when we see these individuals and can do nothing. So thank you guys for coming out. Thank y'all for celebrating my children. This is my daughter, everybody be wondering. I ain't know Miss Flowers had kids, yeah. I have three girls, this is my youngest daughter. I have an oldest one somewhere. The oldest is behind me, and my middle one is somewhere on the mission. But it's okay though. So that's my family. So on top of my family, I have some of my other family here, and extended family. So I'm gonna let Archie speak. So again, it can close, you know, close out so we can move the process, but I just need you guys to be aware of what's going on. Yes, ma'am.